when older white people use language that they don't know anything about, the results can be quite embarrassing. In fact, you could say that Nick Spencer is... talking about Nick Spencer's latest issue of Captain America, Sam Wilson, number 17, in which he shows really how out of touch he is. Nick Spencer first came to my attention and the attention of a multitude of other people when he turned Captain America into a neo-Nazi, an Hydra sleeper agent. How did he do this? Well, because the Red Skull is manipulating a child who is actually also a cosmic cube, like, imagine a cube that warps reality at your whims, and he uses that to revamp Captain America's history, which is not the strangest thing I've heard out of superhero comics. Now, this storyline has the potential for some really interesting, you know, commentary on our political landscape, because let's face it, America has never been kind to people who are straight, white, and male. In fact, you could look at the current uh, North Dakota uh, protests against, uh, against the oil line there, the Nodapa, as proof that America gives more of a damn about oil and money than it does about people and water. However, it's got two things going against it. One, Nick Spencer just ain't that good a writer. And two, Captain America himself was created by two Jewish guys, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, during the 1930s as a symbol against the rise of fascism in Europe. You know, and this was also during the time when America was quite okay with it. In fact, Jack Kirby got so much hate, he had people show up to try to beat him up. Well, those Nazi sympathizers ran away when Jack Kirby said, Okay, I'll be down there in five minutes. And it actually took the mayor of New York City at the time, who was a huge Captain America fan, to get people to lay off of Jack Kirby. In fact, there's a couple reasons why Jack Kirby was the king. Now, getting back to Sam Wilson, issue number 17. This issue is about, well, Nick Spencer just really making fun and satirizing social justice activism by having Joaquin Torres, the new Falcon, alongside Rage, who was a former Avengers and New Warriors member, defend a right-wing pundit from a leftist extremist group called the Bombshells. This is pretty tiring for a couple of reasons. Well, the first is that this is more along the lines of, you know, be the better person, which is something that black people and well, lots of other people of color hear almost constantly when they vent their frustration and anger at the injustices visited upon them. Be the better person. This is right up there with saying, give Trump a chance. It just doesn't work. Secondly, this feels entirely ripped off wholesale from Neil Adams' debut issue of Jon Stewart. That was written in the 70s. This was written in 2016. You had figured that there would be something more original with it. Not to mention that, although I haven't read that issue, I imagine Neil Adams' writing of Jon Stewart, however, you know, uh, filled with black power from a white man's perspective, it must have been, uh, it was probably just better writing overall. And another reason? It's quite racist to have a white writer through the mouth of a black character going nay, 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 and finger-waving at this younger generation. In fact, a lot of online activism, I'm not just talking about what's discussed on Tumblr, although Tumblr is one tool used to discuss it, has been pioneered by many people of color. For example, the Nodapo hashtag was done online by Native Americans in North Dakota, and they're fighting this, fighting it to this day. And thanks to online activism, they've been able to get the word out when mainstream media didn't want to touch it. The Black Lives Matter started back in 2013, started by three black women, Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, Opal Tamiti. 
and one really famous criticism of white feminism was My Feminism Will Be Intersectional or It Will Be Bullshit by Flavia Zodan. So whether Nick Spencer meant to or not, he's basically painted all of online activism as a bunch of overly sensitive Tumblr users. Especially when he has the bombshells, who are all people of color, except for you know the one white woman, uh, saying things like, Captain Patriarchy, this is your trigger warning, this is a safe space, your silent acquiescence is problematic to the extreme. My fucking god, who talks like this shit? As for the character of Ariella Connor, I have to wonder if Nick Spencer knows anything else about these right-wing pundits. See, she's easily an obvious stand-in for the likes of Tony Lauren, who was on The Daily Show, as well as Ann Coulter and Milo Yiannopoulos. And these people are paid thousands of dollars for their book deals and TV shows and their speaking tours. And they are genuinely hurting people with this speech. Their hate speech is violence against people of color and LGBTQ people and, you know, everyone who isn't straight, white, and male. And it makes me wonder if Spencer know, Nick Spencer knows anything about that. And to have Sam Wilson go on with, oh, we've got to learn to compromise. No. No. There is no compromise to be had with these people. They are hurting people. And nothing else happens with this character. Like in the issue, yeah, people show up to protest, but then they have these left-wing extremists show up uh, as though it's a complete dismissal of how we have to learn to, you know, take our, not take ourselves so seriously. No, you're wrong, Nick Spencer. There's no compromise to be had with these people. They need to be shouted down. They need to not have book deals, not have TV show appearances. We need to stop giving them so much damn attention. And that's all you're doing with this comic book. You're giving these ignorant, bigoted pricks attention. And you're telling us to compromise with them. No. No, Nick Spencer. We don't. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't be so critical of Nick Spencer as I would of his writing. When Usually when I review something, you be critical of the writing because, again, you don't know the person all that well. Except for the fact that, basically, Nick Spencer has been completely, utterly dismissive of any criticism that has come his way online. Telling people, you know, not be so serious and learn to laugh at yourself. No, Nick Spencer... Uh, you're, you're basically grouped yourself up with the likes of Brian Michael Bendis and Dan Slott with this. So, basically, I've spent $4 on this, and that's $4 American, so it's a bit more cost. Uh, so you don't have to read this shit. Don't bother with it. This issue isn't worth it. Nick Spencer isn't worth it. It's important to point out and be critical of the media that we consume, but you can find something far better than this. In fact, I think, as I said before, Neil Adams' writing from the 70s on this issue, as ham-fist as it is from of a white liberal during the 60s and 70s, is probably much better than anything Nick Spencer could write these days. I'm Triple J. That's all i got left to say. Take care.